so let me just say this. 10 seasons have figuratively flown by. It has been uh, quite a run. And it's, it's interesting when you do a daily show that you just kind of go, you go to work and you do it, and then you, 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 you remember some of the stuff you've done, but you sort of forget the scope of what's happened uh, in your time. And it's, it's true in any part of life. You just kind of remember the experiences you had, but you forget a lot of the experiences as well. So when we were reliving the 10 seasons, just looking at the, the fascinating people, the emotional moments, the strange moments, and the sheer world beaters that have sat in this red chair over the past 10 seasons. So we thought we would show you some of that, some highlights from 10 seasons of our time here at CBC. Welcome Larry King. LeBron James. Mr. Samuel L. Jackson. The first lady of song, Amber. Bob Walters. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Cruise. Say this, you know, with respect, if I had done the, co the Coach Oprah thing, my friends would have loved it. Oh, they would yeah. come to me going, that was amazing. Uh, no, no, that that's exactly what happened. Like, Deserve. Yeah. Deserve. Too soon, I don't want to hear about Too it soon. anymore. Too soon. Wait 30 minutes. <laughs> I was really fighting to not look pretentious for years. And then someone gives you one inch, and I was like grabbing it so hard. And just going around the, the biggest douchebag. <laughs> My dad would read all my scripts. Really? He would think? forget them. <laughs> I was like, oh, dad, it's the guy who takes the drug. Oh, the drug, is that the one when they're hungover? He was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'm just gonna, you know, throw it down, and I just kind of feel the record out and see. Is, yeah, is I mean, I'm pretty hip hop. A hip, a hop, a hip it to the hip it to hip hip to hop it, you don't stop to rock it to the bang bang boogie, say up jump to boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to the Do you have an age that you remember the most? No, I don't remember much of anything, honestly. <laughs> You're looking forward to making a movie where you don't have to shoot everybody at the end? Yes, because it's starting to become a, you know, a recurring theme. I was thinking, God, if I do a romantic comedy, I might have to like shoot Cameron Diaz at the end or people aren't gonna wanna see it. Are you better at takeoffs or landings? Well, you, you gotta be good at both. <laughs> True or false, in an interview with Harper's Bazaar, you said you've always wanted to have sex with a drag queen. Um... <laughs> I think we know the answer to that. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? You like to sing, right? I <laughs> take my hand, take my whole life to... I love it when they, when they actually cast a guy that looks like he could be your father. Yeah. You know, I've done movies where I'm like, oh, great, Woody Allen's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> I can see it. Yeah. It's harder for an actor to and play And Whoopi Goldberg's my mother. This is... Uh... <laughs> Well, you hear an awful lot of uh, people who are visible minorities in Hollywood talk about how there aren't the right amount of roles for them. And Listen, that... I'm, I'm an amphibian American and proud of it. <laughs> so my big breakthrough, I mean, it sounds like we're talking about the Middle Ages, was when I was able to write for the men, mm -hmm. not just do the girly features. It took a long time in between directing and projects. <laughs> well, there was a whole bunch of reasons why I took a long time. I had children and I had an acting career and I, you know, you had another still movie. still have one if you want. I though. guess. Yeah. I don't know, but I find in my career, I've had a, a lot of people disagree with me. <laughs> you can tell by the look on their face, it's kind of like, oh, you're doing it that way. So you know that this film is going to deal with the conversation about race in America today. People will talk about it. What do you feel about where it's at? This war on drugs and the mass incarcerations that have happened pretty much for the last 40 years has just decimated the black male population. It isn't easy to love something as much as you love a child. It, that's, it's like looking into the sun, you know what I mean? It's intense. If I can, through my experience, shed light on the way out of a difficult situation that I'm, I know many kids are experiencing, you know, just like I did when I was a teenager, I mean, it's, that's, that's huge. I can remember writing The Shining about this uh, dry drunk Jack Torrance and thinking to myself, boy, I'm glad I'm not that guy. <laughs> I drink a lot, but I don't drink that much. I'm not that bad. And then coming back to it years later after sobering up and saying, I was that guy. What happened to the values of helping the weak? I mean, I grew up in an era where Roy Rogers rules for living, and yeah. you look them up on the internet, and they're good <laughs> rules. Rush Limbaugh really attacked you. I mean, he didn't care about me, or he didn't care about stem cells. He didn't care about Parkinson's. He cared about how would he flame up his base. Uh, President? Good to see you. You too, thanks for your time. There is a direct correlation between societies like that that deny women uh, their opportunities 
and societies that are breeding grounds for extremism and unfortunately terrorism. Did you look around and go, maybe I am unqualified for this, maybe I shouldn't be in this position at this point? No, absolutely not. Did I ever feel that I was unqualified? If you allow it, you're encouraging it. They're going to look back and ask us one of two questions, either what were you thinking or how did you solve it? Mm -hmm. I want them to ask that second question. Yeah. What's your relationship like with the United Nations? And you ask a lot of questions. It's, it's so embarrassing to be American, just because it's just we're the worst. No, you know, you don't we're mean horrible. That. Unfortunately and surprisingly, actually, Canada is not m living up to the promise that they made at Glen Eagles in 05. Uh, Bob Geldof said this year, um, he had a quote which was that that uh, that Harper went to the G8, but he left Canada behind. <laughs> um. What do I say? <laughs> if you read about a young politician, you always read about how popular he is. Mm -hmm. But popularity is meaningless. It's about how principled he is. Well, I'm a Canadian, a proud Canadian, a very proud francophone. I, I still speak English with a French accent to know who I am, you know. <laughs> a, and, uh, so it's a choice. You're making a choice. Oh, yes. They thought they could take it for granted, the secular values of the society, enlightenment values. The religious people could go to church, but they would leave us alone. Now we can't be so sure of this. People lifted me up and said, I believe in you. You can do better. You're, you're about to enter that great stage of one's life where they get to find out what's next. Do you mm. have an idea? No, there's nothing next. That's all right. I think most of the world's advances in creativity and invention mm -hmm. and in almost anything have been done by little spurts of madness. Having a little edge is more interesting. Um, I, I don't know many saints. I've heard a lot about you, George. What did you hear? I heard that you're, you're Canada's gift to Canadian women. Well. So it's, it's easier to get an opportunity to start on television, but it's a damn sight more difficult to get well-known Certainly, when there are 200 channels and a lot of them have got tiny audiences. Has the That's where of... you've done so well. Well, we've done Hasn't he done time. well? Yeah. Yes. Still with the purse. Brought I love my it. Handbag. You brought it's, your handbag. I saw that tweet of yours. Mm -hmm. I would never, ever disappoint you. You don't really get talked about in the press in that respect, you know, the kind of insanity of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. You're not in it. Is, it. is that a conscious choice or is it just you've gotten lucky? It's extremely conscious. I mean, it's taken me eight years to come on to your show. I, oh, I know. <laughs> oh, I know. I see it on your show, man. I see you on TV. I feel the same way. I, I want to watch you because you are you know, what you have is positive and great, and I'm sure everybody else feels that way. No, you know very what I mean? Said. Thank you. Thank you. George has done something remarkable in that he speaks to the country and those of us in the country in a totally Canadian, humanitarian, equal, fair, but passionate way of speaking to people. And that is rare. So he has done an enormous service to our country. And to <laughs> <laughs> so kind of Thank you.